Hey guys, welcome back to Real Green Lawn. So today is tool review time, and I've got a tool over here that I really want to talk about. So let me show you. All right, here from Craftsman, I've got a 10 inch chainsaw with a pull saw attachment. Now, if you notice, it's got a cord on the back. And I know what you're thinking, everything's got a battery nowadays, and it works really well with batteries. Who buys corded tools? Well, hear me out on this one. So the reason why I was shopping for a chainsaw of this category was because I had two trees in my front yard, two bald cypress trees that I really wanted to take down. And I didn't want to pay somebody around $800 to $1,000 to have both of those things taken out and the stumps ground down. So I went the alternative route, which was what's the cheapest chainsaw that I could purchase to maybe take this thing out myself. This is where we ended up was with this Craftsman chainsaw. Now the reason why I didn't go battery powered is because I don't own any um, Craftsman tools that require a battery. So I can't share a battery that would be needed for their chainsaw with another power tool. So this being a one job wonder, meaning I'm going to take out these two trees and then probably never touch this or it'll be a long time before I actually touch this tool again. And the battery would probably go bad over time. And so I just didn't think it would be worth the money. Two, if you have a cord, yes, I know it's a tripping hazard. You got to run the extension cord out there, but it's just right here in my front yard. So it was super easy for me to get the power I needed to the site that I was working in. And then three, the job that I was doing would probably require more than one battery to be charging and going at the same time. So maybe two to three batteries. Now the cost is getting pretty high to where I probably should have either just bought a gas power chainsaw or hired somebody to do it. So anyway, that's why I ended up with the corded version of this chainsaw. Now I will tell you, this thing is pretty good. It's a, it's a beast. I was actually blown away. Um, and here's why, let me show you a few things. So, all right. So the first feature that I want to show you is the pole attachment here. Now I'm 5'11". So you're looking almost six feet tall. And this part right here, this bracket actually mounts into the handle of the chainsaw. The silver part extends out, oh, probably another four feet or so. So you're looking pretty close to 10 feet for the full extension of the pole. Plus reaching overhead, however tall you are. I didn't actually use the uh, this four foot extension of sliding this part out because I felt like, I mean, this chainsaw isn't too heavy, but it's, I mean, it's still got a little bit of weight to it. And by the time you get the full length of this pole overhead, you need to make sure that you're in an area where this thing can come down, the branch that you're cutting comes down and you're clear of. However, that may be kind of hard for you to control that far of a lever arm to where the chain may hit the ground of the chainsaw. So I kept it, I just cut everything that I could at this length. Um, obviously I didn't get on a ladder or anything like that. I felt like it, we're in that job, then the price that it would pay to hire somebody to do it um, would be cheaper than my medical bills of falling off a ladder, chainsaw overhead, or a big branch coming down. All right, the next thing about this chainsaw is it's built for right-handed people only. Um, you cannot, you know, you got the motor right here, so you can't put the handle on the other side. Guard doesn't go on the other side for left-handed people, so you'll just have to deal with it. I'm left-handed. So it wasn't too uncomfortable to use. Right here, you've got your chain oil reservoir. So it's pretty easy to see. Just fill it full of oil and then let it rip. And as you can see, I've actually left this chainsaw dirty because I kind of want to show you where it would bind up a little bit, um, where it collects a bunch of debris and everything like that. And then how you would go about cleaning it if it was to get gunged up or something like that, which did happen a few times. But as you can see from my pictures, it was a pretty big job that I put this thing through. So um, it's just, that's just part of using a tool like this. Moving on to the uh, actual chain. Now we're not plugged in here. Um, as you can see how loose that is right there. Obviously you, 
you don't want to operate it when it's that loose. You should barely be able to pull it down off this uh, guide, um, per the instructions anyway. And so, as you can see, it's pretty loose. It's very easy to adjust that. They give you this little wrench right here. And, and then once you get your bolt off, this bracket comes off. Now there's no washers or anything. But here I wanted to also show, this is after, after a job, this has been done, let's see here, I think I cleaned it four different times during, during my job, but as you can see, there's a bunch of buildup right in here. And what will happen is it'll gung up around this chain and it'll actually push this arm, um, actually it'll push it back a little bit, which will loosen the chain. All right, so while I have the cover off, this flywheel here, it is a hard plastic, okay? And then also, the sprocket is metal. Chain's obviously metal. But as far as the inside components, you know, you're not going to get a longevity out of that as you would, say, probably a nicer steel or echo um, or even just any other higher-end chainsaw. But this one was also $98 compared to something more expensive that should have something like that if that's what you're paying for. Um, I'm just gonna leave that taken off because it'll be getting cleaned after this video. If you're doing a really big job, more than just trimming some limbs, then you're gonna have to clean this out every, oh, 30 cuts or so, just because it'll start binding up. The chain will get a little out of whack as far as getting loosened up a little bit. And then if you let it go too far, it'll bind up enough and it'll actually throw the chain off the guide safely. It never, you know, it never went shooting or anything like that. It just fell off just kind of like a chain falls off a bicycle. So yeah, that's kind of what I would recommend is if you're using this, watch that area right there. It just needs to be regularly cleaned as you're going, just like any tool would need. Um, and then last, as far as the features go on this, there is no chain break on this. I don't know what level of chainsaw you'd have to get into, but I would assume there's a chain break on the higher end level chainsaws. This one does not have one. So if you let go of your trigger there, the chain will keep running as the motor dies down. So you wanna let it come to a complete stop before you reach in or anything like that. All right, so I brought a few logs inside to just kind of show you what size you can really do well with this chainsaw. This is a seven inch log. And as you can see, it didn't have any trouble cutting across this face. Um, there was no really binding or anything like that, just as long as you, know, you kept the cut clean going through and you didn't have any pinching um, on the chain. So which was one thing to kind of watch out for whenever you're starting to get into a, a bigger cut like this. It was very easy to pinch the chain. So you want to make sure that the pressure um, on your chain isn't there while you're making the cut or something like this will actually stop it. And then you're kind of in a bind there. You'll have to push on it or something like that. So once you get up to this level, this is, uh, you just kind of watch, gotta watch what you're doing to really make sure this all is working properly. But also, this thing wasn't really intended for something this big, in my opinion. However, it will do it. Now this is primarily what you're gonna be working with the most with this chainsaw, and that is tree limb size logs. And it handles it without question. You just put the chain on, pull the trigger, and let it rip, and that thing comes right on down. So, very impressive of how well it works with, if you're just wanting to do some uh, low level limb removal, that's its forte. That's what it was built to do. That's what it was made to do. Um, so I would highly recommend it. If that's the job that you're wanting to do, this is probably the saw for you. However, if you're feeling as adventurous as I was, it can take down one of those medium, smaller to medium sized trees because the base of this one was around 24 inches and it sectioned it all off just fine. So it did the job that I really wanted it to do, which was remove the two bald cypress out of the front yard. So Therefore, this chainsaw from Craftsman being just slightly under $100 really impressed me because it got the jobs done that I needed it to do without breaking. 
And I mean, what more can you ask for? No, it's not a commercial chainsaw. No, it's not going to have the longevity of a steel or an echo or something along that caliper. But if you're using it for one job wonder or just light maintenance of some trees around your property once a year or so, it's probably going to last you long enough to pay $98 for it and feel very justified in the purchase. So anyway, if you have any questions or comments or anything about it, feel free to leave it down below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you next video.